Hey guys, it's Matchy here with another Clip Studio Paint tutorial. This time we're going to be talking about uh, using reference layers for coloring. So let's jump right into it. And uh, I set up a, a canvas here with a with a doodle on it, um, just to kind of give you an idea um, of what we're doing. So just imagine that this here is a your comic page or a comic panel or whatever it is you're coming into color. Um, this layer here, which is this layer would be your ink layer, um, so this would be your final inks, and it's all on one layer. So make sure it's all on one layer, and and to make this work, you really need to have your gaps closed because what we're going to be using is the fill tool to fill these in. Now, here's the thing: when you approach coloring, you want your colors to be on a separate layer. So that's that's the challenge here, which it's not a challenge, but that's you know the trick here of what we're doing. So instead of, you know, say, coloring in here, well, if we need to adjust the, that color or adjust the line art or whatever, we're kind of, our hands are kind of tied because it's all on the same layer. So that's not really ideal. So in the past, what I've done, and probably what you've done if you're watching this video, is to get those colors on a separate layer, you've done something like this, where you make your selection, um, of on the layer, maybe using the wand tool like I'm using, for the areas you want to color a particular color, then you have a new layer created. So here's just a new raster layer, and in that layer we do something like edit. You can either come through with the fill tool then, which will fill on this new layer only, just those selected areas, or usually what I had done was I would go to edit fill and then it would just fill and I would just select everything on the whole page painstakingly with um, the wand tool for like the entire page and I would go and select everything that's one color and then go to a new layer and just like you saw I would go edit fill and fill that color then I go back to the line art deselect, select all my new areas, so I'd be back here, you know, selecting again my new areas, so say this was a second color, and then I'd come back to this layer, select my new color, and then, you know, edit, fill. And that's how I would do it, which doesn't take too long here, but if you're doing a whole page, or you're doing a whole series of pages, or you're doing a ton of stuff, all that back and forth is a lot of work. So what's cool in Clip Studio Paint is they have um, reference layers, so let's Control Z for ever. Get rid of that. Okay, we'll deselect. Actually, I'll just delete this layer and um, start with a new layer. So, okay. So what you need to do is on this initial inking layer, you need to come up here to this little lighthouse and say set as reference layer. So now this layer becomes a reference layer. It's still your ink layer, but it's now your reference layer. And so I make a new raster layer and I put it below this layer and and you'll see why I do that in a minute. Um, I typically like to have my color layers underneath my my line art layers anyway. So okay so now we're active on layer 2 which is has nothing on it yet. We're using layer 1 as a reference layer we clicked on the lighthouse. Okay back to layer 2. So then we just come over here and we get our fill tool and when you go, so we're just using our current layer fill tool, and then over here in the tool settings, you need to make sure that this box here is clicked, and it's the, let me see if I can pull this out, it's called multiple referring, and really, I, I've used this selection, which is all layers, but um, if you, for this, you really what you want to do is select this little lighthouse one, which is selects just the reference layers. Um, so you could use all layers. Here we're just using the reference layer because that allows us to be a little more specific. Anyhow, so once you do that, you just get your fill tool and boom, 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 whatever color, whatever shapes it were you were going to fill, you can just go through and, and hit those once. So yeah, you do have to hit each shape individually, but you're not doing it on one layer, going to another layer, going going through the menu, 
doing that whole thing. It's just boom, 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 boom. Then the next color. Then you're on to the next color. Boom, boom, done. It's that easy. And then um, one other trick, which I have anti-aliasing turned off, so it should butt right up against that. Um, I like to work with anti-aliasing off um, for the very sharp edges when it goes to print, and then when I downsize, I'll turn, when I scale down, I'll turn the anti-aliasing on, and it'll do that automatically, but that's a whole other subject. But anyhow, um, but one thing that might concern you is, is if you do have anti-aliasing on, there might be a little gap in there um, from the anti-aliasing. So in order to combat that, what I suggest you do is you turn on, let me get out, let me clear this out one more time. You turn on area scaling, and I have it turned on all the way to one. You can turn it way up, or you can turn it down even below one. Um, one seems to work best for me. I have really thick inks, so this is also work. I could go a little higher, but you know, play around with it and see what works for you. But then it's the same thing. You just come through and you do this: boom, 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 boom. I like saying boom. And actually, one of these probably should have been pink. I don't remember what I was doing. Um, doesn't really. It's not consequential. So anyway, let's zoom in here to these. And then if I take this and you and I turn the opacity down, you can see that it fills in like, I think one, maybe maybe it means one pixel. Um, it, it covers that, there's an overlap, so that you definitely for sure are not gonna see any sort of gap in there. And so let's, let's go back one more time. We'll just do this with one, and we'll see what happens. We'll uh, turn this up to maybe three. So then we come back down here to our coloring layer, we fill that in. Let's dial the oh, let's dial the line layer back so we can see what happened. So there you can see it. It looks like it's done three pixels. So, and you can do this all the way up to looks like twenty pixels. So to give you an idea what that looks like, let's go over here. Boom. So, and you know that could that could be troublesome. That could do an effect that you want to do. Um, yeah, you can actually use these as an effect. Um, if you take the area scaling down below one. Um, you'll purposely put a gap in there. So if that's what you want, you can do that too. That's, that's pretty cool. So anyway, um, this this feature has saved me a lot of time in coloring because I, I did. I used to go back and forth all the time and now I can just go to one layer, not have to switch off the layer, not have to worry about, oh, oops, I colored on the wrong layer for like the last 10 minutes and now my file's all screwed up and I have to start over. None of that happens to me anymore. So. I think this is a really super cool feature in this software and I suggest you give it a try. Anyhow, thanks for watching.